Welcome to Target for ArcGIS. In this section, we will look at creating and displaying grids and contours from surface data. The first thing we will do is add some gridded geophysical data from a Geosoft grid file. You can access Geosoft grid files by clicking on the Add Data button. Let's select the Mag grid. And it appears as a black and white image. We can change the color scheme to give it a traditional cold to hot spectrum. By selecting the layer and looking at the properties, we can also change the sampling options to give the raster a smoother look. Using the Add Data button again, we can choose a Geochem Samples layer file that shows locations of surface samples in our project area. These have been colored according to the gold results. Any point sample data set can be gridded using Geosoft's gridding algorithms such as minimum curvature. Each attribute field is available for gridding. We will create a new grid file called AUPPB. In the Advanced tab, there are many other options. Here we've set this to use Log Gridding. The grid appears automatically, again with a grayscale color scheme. We can change this to match the color scheme of the Geochem layer file of the surface sample gold values. We'll change the order to see the samples plotted on top of the surface grid. Another option is to use the Krieging gridding method to create a grid of the surface samples. Again, we'll choose the AU attribute field and we'll make a new grid file. The advanced options are quite different, and we can look at the variogram of the data to see if the Krieging algorithm is a good choice. We may decide just to display the contours of a grid rather than the entire raster file. Using Geosoft contouring options, we can select a grid file such as the original mag grid we saw earlier. And we will choose to display the contours at 25 and 100 unit intervals. This will create a Geosoft map layer. It is a non-editable and non-attributed layer. But if we take a closer look, we can see that labels are added automatically to the contours. We call this kind of layer a quick map. Let's take another look at the contouring options. This time we'll choose a topography grid, or DEM. And instead of a quick map layer, we will choose to create a shape file of the contours. We will use 25 and 100 as the intervals again, but now they represent meters. This will create a polyline shapefile with the contour level value as an attribute, which we can then edit through layer properties. Here we will change the symbology to a graduated color scheme. We can see the contour lines displayed using the custom color gradients we just defined. In this section, you will see how to import drill hole data from various data sources into Target for ArcGIS. We will import from Common Delimited Text or CSV files, a Microsoft Access database, and a geophysical log from an LAS file. In the Target Drill Hole toolbar, the first step is to create a new drill hole project, which consists of a set of files that will contain all the drill hole data. Here you will set a project name and specify a directory for your new files. Target will be our project name, and we'll use the same folder where our MXD map document is located. Our target project, where we will assemble our drilling data, is displayed in a Geosoft database window, which you can see is still empty. To add data, we'll go to the Import options in the Data menu. There are several choices here, including text, XLS database, and LAS files. 
For the first file, we'll choose Text. Our color locations are stored in a CSV file. A smart wizard leads you through the import process. Here you can preview the data, view and change column names, and delimiting options. There are some required fields that we need to identify, and then the data is ready to import. Callers are now visible in the Geosoft database window. Using the Import Text option again, we will import drill hole survey data from a similarly formatted CSV file. Survey data is optional. In this case, we have dip and azimuth readings at various depths for each hole. In the new target underscore survey tab that appears in the data window, we can see that each drill hole survey has been imported into its own table. Using Data Import Text one more time, we will import the geology interval data from another CSV file. This file is recognized as from two data. Again, we can preview and verify the fields. And geology data is added to our drill hole project. Geochemistry data for these drill holes will come from an Access MDB file. The wizard is a bit different. We can choose from the available tables or views, set the data types, and see the fields in each table. Again, each column can be mapped to the required fields, and then it is ready to import, with the logical name, assay. Finally, we will import an LAS file. Here, we have one geophysical log for hole SKC271, but you can actually import many files simultaneously. There are several other settings as well. The GDB window is movable and dockable. You can interrogate the data in this environment, looking at stats or viewing profiles. Here you can link the data table and profiles of the numeric field. Use the toggle in the toolbar to hide and show the Geosoft database window without closing the files and the drilling data is always accessible for plotting. In this section we will plot the holes in a plan view. Click on the plan icon in the target drilling toolbar to generate a target plan plot. We will start with the default parameters. To start, we'd like to see where the drill holes are located in relation to the geophysical and surface geochemistry data that we have already visualized. The options set here will create a shapefile of collar locations and load it to the current data frame. If we zoom in on the new layer, we see the collar locations for each drill hole. Since our drill holes are not vertical holes, it would be useful to see the trace of each hole projected to the surface. To make changes, simply reopen the Target Plan tool. The Hole Traces tab was set to plot only collars, so we can change this to include the hole traces. And a new shapefile showing the hole trace is added to this data frame. Looking at the full extents, we can see that the drilling is only a small part of the full project area. Open the Target Plan tool again, and we can examine some of the other options that are available here. In the Output tab, there is an option to create a Quick Map layer. A Quick Map is a fast way to plot fully symbolized and labeled layers of all the holes. We can generate this in its own data frame. With the Quick Map layer enabled, we may add options from the Page Layout tab. Here we can choose to include a simple legend and logo. The Plan Location tab gives us the option to focus the Quick Map layer on a specific area and or a vertical extent. We can select the layer where more infill drilling has been done. In the Collars tab, there are options to set the symbology of the collar symbols in the Quick Map layer. 
Remember, if you plot a shapefile with collars, the symbols can be manipulated through the layer properties. In the Whole Traces tab, we will still plot the traces and leave the other options unchanged. The Data tab would allow us to plot data along the traces, such as geology or geochemistry from downhole interval data. We will examine this more closely when we look at sections. Graticules for the Quick Map layer are controlled in the Reference Grid tab. The option to include a clipped raster in the background is available in the Plan Grid tab. The Load Save tab is used to save these parameters for reuse later or for sharing with colleagues. The Voxel tab allows you to include a slice of a 3D grid or model. This is most useful when plotting slices at various depths. Let's see what our results look like now. The Quick Map layer is plotted on top. The quick map contains collars, traces, labels, graticules, legend, title, logo, and scale bar as defined in the plan plot tool. Beneath this layer are the shape files of the collars and traces. Using the collar and trace shape files, you of course have the option to modify the layer properties, add labels, and in the layout view add common map elements such as a graticule grid, title, compass, and scale bar. In this section, we will plot the holes in a section view. Click on the section icon in the drilling toolbar to generate a target section plot. Instead of using the default parameters, which would incorporate all selected holes, we will define a section interactively on the current data frame. The section tool is very similar to the plan tool that we have already seen. The output tab has options for shape files and quick map, and we can plot to new or existing data frames. The Page Layout tab contains options for the Quick Map legend. The Section Location tab contains all the parameters for the section that we just defined. Click on Define and review or change the location and orientation as needed. Note that the scale and extents are related. If we change one, the other is updated automatically. In the Colors tab, as in the Plan tool, you can set the color symbols in the Quick Map layer. In the Topography tab, we can select up to three elevation data models and view them in the cross-section. Here we will just select a DEM grid. There is an option to incorporate a plan view of the section. Other tabs, including the Load, Save, Voxel, and Hold Traces, are the same as they are in the Plan tool. But let's take a closer look at the Data tab. Here we can choose from the imported downhole data that we would like to see plotted in the section along the side of the drill hole trace. Gold from the assays will be plotted as a bar plot on the left side. And a geological field will be plotted on the right as a pattern. The Define tab has different options for each plotting type and sets the symbology in the quick map layer. The rock codes will be color coded and added to the quick map legend using these settings. The Profile tab allows you to select gridded data that you would like to see in profile with your section, such as surface geochemistry or geophysical gridded data. Reference grid options control the graticule grid for the quick map layer. And now we are ready to plot our section. And here is our simple section with a topo line, color coded geology, and not much gold on the left side of the whole trace. Let's plot this again. We'll use the previous parameters, but add a few changes. In the Load Save tab, we can load parameters from a previously created drill hole section. Note that a plan view has been added now. Topography is unchanged. And the data tab shows that AU and rock fields are being plotted in new ways. Reviewing the other tabs, we can see a number of changes, including a legend in the page layout. These changes all came from the new parameters, but we could make additional changes here too. And we'll click OK to see the results. Our section has more data, a plan view at the top where the red lines indicate the center and extents of the section, and a complete legend. Turn off the quick map layer 
and the data is visible in shapefiles that were also plotted. Now you could plot more similar sections for different locations to new data frames, or you can use the Stack Section option to plot adjacent sections to a single plot. The options are very similar, but only Quick Map options are applicable here. This plot will have a new data frame and a simple legend, and it will be a collection of three adjacent sections 20 meters thick and 20 meters apart. All the other settings in the remaining tabs are the same as they were for our first section. And the result is a single plot with three sections. Zoom in for a closer look, and now we can see some gold results. Another way to visualize your data in a drill hole is in a drill log. The strip log tool enables you to quickly create a drill log for a single hole or for many holes at once. Using the strip log tool, you can display up to 32 downhole data types together in one log. Here we have also selected a few fields from the geophysical log. The other tabs provide settings for the layout and legend. Click OK to create a strip log. In this section, we will create a 3D view and prepare our map document for final presentation. Click on the 3D icon in the Target Drilling Toolbar to generate a target 3D plot. Another tool is used to specify all the parameters that we would like to incorporate in this 3D object. Let's explore the tabs. We can set the legend information, modify the hole traces, add downhole data, add topography from a DEM, add a 3D voxel grid, and save or load parameters. The plot appears in a viewer, where we can hide and show surfaces, set the background and the axes, change the scales, show, hide, and manipulate voxels, create isosurfaces from the voxels, Spin the entire view to get some perspective. And add more raster and vector data in a number of ways, like this section grid. Once you have the desired effect, Close the viewer, and you have an object in your map document. In the layout view, organize the data frames that you are interested in, and there you have a final map, complete with all your usual map elements.